Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by our channel. My name is Alan Leistico and I am the youth pastor for Core Student Ministries. I am so honored and thankful that you have checked out our YouTube channel because here at Core Student Ministries, we are deeply passionate about creating digital content that helps you stay connected to your church, to your youth group, and most importantly, to Jesus. And if you could do me a quick favor, can you hit the subscribe button for us down below? Can you also click that little bell icon so that you can be notified every time we upload a video and every time we go live for Wednesday night youth worship? And lastly, can you put a comment down below and just letting us know how we can pray for you because we care deeply and passionately about your faith journey and your spiritual well-being. Now let's jump over to our video for today. Well, what's up, Core family? And I hope that all of you guys have gotten back to a normal routine after last week's crazy winter snowstorm. Uh, Natalie and I, thankfully, we didn't lose uh, any power, but we did lose uh, our water for a few hours. Um, and so just, you know, keep, uh, keep praying for everyone as they continue to deal and then recover with uh, last week's storm, because uh, there's a lot of people who are still suffering and need a lot of help. Uh, but the, for those of you who are watching this video, you might be wondering why we didn't have a live stream last night. Well, it's actually because of that snowstorm. Uh, it, it prevented us from joining together as a church last week for our Ash Wednesday worship service, which happened to be moved to last night for Ash Wednesday 2.0, which by the way was absolutely awesome. And if you came out to it, guys, I'm very proud of you. And that was so cool that you were there and present for it. Now, you might be wondering why I'm going kind of back and forth, looking down, looking back up to you. Um, I have my scripture and my sermon notes here for this is our last sermon of the Free People Sermon Series. Uh, I wanted to make sure you guys got it, so I'm going to be kind of looking back and forth as I go to my notes, and I look at you. Now, if you're not familiar with Ash Wednesday, it's, it's the day where the entire church starts the 40 days of Lent, in preparation for Jesus' death on the cross during the Easter weekend. Now, during the service, the pastors will anoint, place oil, and even ashes on our forehead in the form of a cross. Now, this is meant to symbolize you have started to fast or to give something up so that you can be more focused on God than rather yourself. Now, if you're interested in that worship service, you can actually watch the video uh, of the live stream because we did record it and we did live stream it last night. Um, and you can watch that on the church's YouTube channel. The link will be down in the description below. Now, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into our intro video for the last time this month. Let's play it. We live lives that are bound by rules. We are told when to get up and when to go to bed. At times, these rules can feel suffocating and a heavy burden. Yet through Jesus Christ, we are set free. We are set free by the shedding of His most precious blood to be a people set apart from the world. Living for Christ means we die to sin. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. We are called not to disobey the law, but to be obedient to the law that gives life. Find your joy and peace in obedience and faithfulness to the Anointed One, the Son of God. Well, guys, as I said, welcome to our final week of Free People, where we're talking about rules and freedom. Now, to wrap up this entire series, I have a very important question that I want to ask all of you watching. And what I want you to do is down in the comment section below, put your answer, okay? So what is, this is the question for you, and I have a, a couple follow-ups as well. What is the very last movie that you watched? 
Well, for me, it was actually during the snowstorm last week. Natalie and I watched the movie Tenet. So again, down in the description below, or not the description, uh, down in the comment section below, make sure you put your answer of what movie that you watched most recently. Now in that movie that you watched, was there some kind of conflict between a couple of characters or a whole bunch of characters? If so, what was the conflict? And what caused that conflict? Well, you see, in the movie Tenet, this whole thing is, is a Christopher Nolan movie, and it's all about timeception. If you ever saw the movie Inception by Christopher Nolan, it is this crazy, weird way of looking at the way time flows. And the conflict is that there is a, a World War III in the future, and people in the future are coming back into the present to be able to prepare for the war in the future so that the war in the future doesn't happen but it kind of like does happen, but it doesn't. It, it's so weird. It, it just bends your minds. And that was the conflict is how, do, how does the future prevent that war by coming to the present and fixing things? Now, I want to know from you, what was the movie you watched and what was the conflict between the characters? What caused it? How do they resolve it? Because here's the thing, that's what we're kind of talking about in this whole sermon series is, is all about rules and how rules can conflict with our freedoms and can kind of make us feel restricted. But here's the thing, every single day, I mean, right now in this moment that you're watching this video and also yesterday, but also tomorrow, every day, there are countless rules and guides that make sure your life is safe. Now, there are obvious ones like the, the rules that you have at school. Maybe it's like no running in the hallways. It also could be if you do happen to have rules at home, uh, maybe it's that you have to be at your house before curfew. Like for me, when the street light came on, um, that was the signal for me to come home. That was kind of my curfew. But also, you know, the laws that we live by in this country every single day. You know, for example, like you're not supposed to kill anybody. But our lives are also dictated by rules that we don't always think about. Like, for example, the law of nature. You know, gravity, the, one of the most powerful laws in the, in, in the universe. Uh, what about cause and effect? The passing of time, kind of like in the movie Tenet. But there's also like social norms that we have to follow that we don't even think about. For example, not being a jerk or mean to somebody. You know, don't point at somebody or stare at them because maybe there's something different about them. You know, hold the door for the person that's coming in behind you. There's also moral rules. You know, do what is right. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't betray people. Don't mock people. Don't be cruel to other people. You know, in real life and also in movies, there are consequences for breaking the rules. Some of you know this very well. You know, breaking a law might lead to punishment. Trying to break a law of nature, for example, gravity, will probably lead you to some form of injury. And also, breaking rules that negatively impact others will also often result in conflict between you and that other person. And I want to invite you now, as you continue to watch this video, I want to invite you into a time of prayer so that as you continue to watch this video, that you can be focused and centered on Jesus Christ because he is the one who sets all rules, all laws, and he is the one we are called to obey. So will you join me in a time of prayer? Abba, Father, Lord of the universe, we thank you for this, this content and this video and, and everything that you're doing in this ministry whether it is that we can only watch the, the live stream or watch videos and we can't actually be here in person or we can be here in person. Regardless, God, we just pray to you right now. We pray that we are able to understand what it means to be obedient to your laws and that through your laws, we are set free. That by faithfulness through your son, Jesus Christ, that you have saved us from our sins and through that salvation, we are free from the guilt and the shame that we experience. We pray for safety, we pray for comfort, 
And we pray that you continue to enter into our lives and show us your unconditional love. It is by the name of Jesus Christ that I pray. Amen. If you've been with us for the last few weeks, you know we've been talking a lot about God's law. Today we're going to see how breaking God's law leads to conflicts with each other and with other people. But God's law doesn't necessarily mean laws like don't eat shrimp or don't wear clothes made of two different fabrics. And by the way, those are actually real laws that you can find in the Old Testament of the Bible. When we talk about God's law, we're talking about one single commandment from Jesus. Or actually, is it two? Well, I'm going to let the people over at the Bible Project help us explain what I mean. And you can actually find the link to their YouTube channel down in the description below. So let's take a second and watch their video. There, uh... So there's a lot of laws in the Bible. Actually, they're all in the first five books of the Bible. There's 613 laws given to ancient Israel when they're around Mount Sinai. And so, you know, many people approach these. There's so many and they wonder, what are they here for? Um, some people run away from them. Some people think they're really interesting or advanced for their day. Um, and so what we're asking is, how do these laws fit into the overall storyline of the Bible? And what did Jesus think about these laws and what did he do with them? Because he thought they were really important. In fact, he said they can all be summarized in the great command that he called loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. So we're asking how do the laws fit into the storyline of the Bible? What do they have to do with Jesus? What did he think about them and do with them? And what do we learn about God and about ourselves through these laws? So we're excited to make it. I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, question for you. Okay. Yeah. How many laws is the Great Command? Great question. Yeah, you know, Jesus said the Great Command is uh, love the Lord your God, and the second Great Command is like it. So there's two Great Commands. Well, he actually, he only says there's one. Jesus says there's one Great Command, but then he gives two. Love God and love your neighbor. So do we? So, so is Jesus just bad at math? Yeah, I think in Jesus' is. mind, you love God by loving your neighbor, and when you love your neighbor, you're loving God, because you're loving people made in God's image. Awesome. Well, welcome back, guys. Well, here's the thing: whether you think of this as one command or two, we've been talking about how we view rules freedom and authority with Jesus's law of love in mind. According to Jesus, as long as we're following this rule, we're following all the other rules that matter. So when we find ourselves in conflict with someone else, I wonder how often it's because someone has broken Jesus's law of love. Think about your own life. Think about the time that you've been in conflict with people. Was Jesus' law of love broken in that situation? I'm pretty sure it was. You know, another person who tried to view things with the law of love that comes to my mind is James. So we've been talking about James all month long. And I'm going to put a picture up here on the screen. This is the last time you're going to see, see James. This is a, an artist's rendition of James. But you see, James was leading a lot of people. And you can be sure he helped his community resolve tons of conflicts. And when he did, you can be sure he was working hard to advise them according to Jesus' law of love. Well, I want to invite you. Grab your Bible, not your cell phone, not a Bible app. Grab a physical Bible, all right? Because I want you to open up God's Word. This is how you learn about God. We're going to be in the New Testament, near the very back, and the letter that James wrote. We're in James chapter 4. We're going to read verses 1 through 3. James chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Listen to God's word. What causes fights and quarrels among you? 
Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. I want to unpack that for a second. That's complicated and that's, that's a lot. So let me help you better understand what James is talking about. Let's break it down for a second. Well, in this situation, people had been fighting, obviously, based on what he said. Now, this really isn't a surprise, right? I mean, people fight a lot. I I'm sure you fight with your friends, maybe your boyfriend, or your girlfriend, maybe your parents, teachers, coaches, what have you. Now, we saw a few minutes ago how many of us are in conflict with others right now. Disagreeing with someone who doesn't necessarily mean you're not being loving, but many of our conflicts happen because we haven't loved others like we love ourselves. Selfishness and jealousy can cause conflict. We can all be selfish sometimes, especially you teenagers. You live within the world of selfishness. You try really hard. You aspire not to be, but it's hard to do that as a teenager. You know, we want to get our way. We want to be right. Have what someone else has or be the best. And those desires typically lead us into conflict. But we can't love others and be jealous or selfish at the same exact time. It doesn't work. They butt heads. We scheme to get what we want. You and I may have never killed anyone to get our way, but we've probably come up with a good scheme or two in order to get what we want. What I mean is we manipulate each other. We manipulate people around us. But we can't love others while manipulating, making demands, or pressuring people to get what we want. Our motives are often wrong. James reminds us that, that God doesn't honor selfish motives. If you're not getting what you want, even if you've been praying for it, oh God, please give me this thing. Maybe it's because you've been asking with selfish motives. Because we can't truly be loving while being self-serving. Again, it's in conflict. They butt heads. James is describing a me-centered thinking. This is not what James meant when he said to love God and love others as we love ourselves. Hey, excuse me, that's not what Jesus meant when he said that. We can't follow the law of love and be me-centered at the same time. It just doesn't work. Now, this might sound strange for some of you to hear at church, but you are free to do whatever you like. I mean, are you free to be selfish? Of course you are. Are you free to speak badly about others? Well, yeah. Are you free to be judgmental? Again, yes. Are you free to be bitter, arrogant, cruel, resentful, impatient, unkind, or rude? Well, yeah, of course you are. Nothing you, will, nothing you do will change God's love for you. But if you did these things, let me ask you, and seriously ask yourself this question. If you did anything that I just said, would you be fulfilling Jesus' law of love? Of course not. Because you, you can't be selfish and love someone else. If you love God and you love other people, well, then you're going to be thinking about them and not you. You know, we might think freedom means doing whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it, by however you want to do it. But can you imagine the consequences of living a life like that? If you lived your life entirely for yourselves, honestly ask yourself this question, will you truly be happy? Really be happy? Do you think you'd be fulfilled? Do you think you'd have meaning relationships with other people? I don't think so. So what's the alternative to a me-centered thinking? How do we avoid unnecessary conflict with others? How do we resolve conflicts when they happen? And how do we do all of this according to Jesus' law of love? 
Right? Maybe the best thing that we can do is to look to the one who gave us the law of love. Because it's not just Jesus' words that teach us how to love. It's his actions as well. The first passage I'm going to read are the words of Jesus. Then the second passage recounts the actions of Jesus. So again, I want to invite you to grab your Bible, to read along with me. And the first set of, first set of scriptures we're going to read comes from the Gospel of John, which is the fourth book in the New Testament. And we're going to be in John chapter 15. We're going to read verses 12 through 13. All right, so it is John chapter 15, verses 12 and 13. Listen to God's word. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And to end this sermon series and to end this video with our last scripture reading, it's coming from the New Testament. It's in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. Listen to God's word. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. I'm not necessarily saying blood, brothers and sisters. I'm talking about you and I. Here's the truth, guys. Jesus was God, is God, will always be God. Which meant he really did have the freedom to do whatever he wanted. This whole universe is his. You are his, along with everything and everyone in it. He has the power to do anything he wants to do at any time. But what did he do? What did Jesus do? He gave up his life for you and for me. Jesus chose to give up his freedom in two ways. Although he was God, he chose to humble himself by inhabiting a fleshy, sinful, human, weak body here on earth. He chose to give up his own life, submitting to torture and death. So why did he do it? Well, for the simple fact, he just loved us. And he wanted us to experience that freedom that he provides. Through his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus gave us freedom that we could never have found on our own. Freedom from sin and condemnation and judgment forever. Freedom to live a life full and abundant. A life right now full of abundance and joy. Jesus freely gave up his freedom in order to love you and to love me. And then he told us to do the same for each other. And that's the ironic thing about freedom. Free people give up their freedoms for others. Not because they have to, but because they chose to in love. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, Sovereign Lord of everything, the Father to Jesus, we thank you for the freedom that you have provided us. Through your will, through your law of love, we are set free. That when we love you and we love others as we love ourselves, we can truly live out what you call us to do, to live out your rules and your laws. So God, I pray for the students watching this video that they may understand that being obedient to rules and laws does set them free. It is not something that is meant to hinder them or, or hurt them or, or suffocate them or keep them pushed down, but it's to provide them freedom through safety. God, we just pray now for your salvation that we may be set free from our sins through your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, guys, before we go, before the, the video ends, don't go anywhere just yet. 
Um, I want to thank you for joining us in this sermon series, learning about following rules and how they can set us free. And I know this might be challenging for some of you guys, but I promise it will help you grow as a person to live a happier and healthier life. Now, there's a couple quick things that are coming up that I want you to know about. Next week, we're going to be back to uh, normal core worship at 6 p.m., in person or online via live stream as we start a brand new series called Lost and Found. And all throughout the month of March, we're going to be doing a character dive into Jesus, into who he was, is, and who he will be. We're going to learn about why Jesus is important to us and why we are important to Jesus. So I want to encourage you guys, join us next Wednesday as we start this awesome new sermon series right here on YouTube or come in person. Also, a quick reminder that if you're in high school and you want to go on a mission trip this summer, please register for UM Army. Or if you're in either junior high or senior high and you want to go to summer camp, please register register for that as well. You can find the links to that at our website, which is in the description box of this video down below. And lastly, I just want to share with you that I am trying to work on a few spring break activities for, for us to do as a youth group, which is going to be in a couple of weeks. So I need you to stay tuned on Instagram for more information on that. But guys, I love you very, very much, and I hope to see all of you next week. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for checking out our video today. Up on your screen is going to be a link to to our channel so that you can go and check out other content that we have created for you. And also there is going to be a link to a video that YouTube thinks that you want to watch next. Now, if that's not the video you want to watch next, again, I highly encourage you to go over to our channel and check out our various playlists that we have because something in those videos might be what you need right now. Again, thank you so much for checking us out, and we'll see you in the next next video. Bye.